What if your random encounters in role-playing games were way more interesting? Today on the What If Brigade, we're going to talk about sprucing up random encounter tables. These are some tips that you can use on random encounter tables that you already have. Now, of course, maybe you can always just make a new one, a better one, a more interesting random encounter table, find some better ones online. But a lot of times when you're uh, uh, playing adventures, uh, there, there's a random encounter table that's been uh, specifically written for that adventure. It may uh, you know, have some things that, that deal with that particular environment, whether it's the jungle or whether it's uh, you know, an arctic forest or all those kinds of things. So, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, uh, so, so you may want to use that table, but you know, after a few times playing that adventure, uh, you know, you've seen those encounters a few times, or if you're the GM, you're running those encounters a few times. Uh, it, you know, it, it can get a little bit boring. Uh, and, you know, even if you've, you've never played a particular adventure before, a lot of random encounter tables that I see, they just, they, they need a little something extra, something to give them more story. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> this will be a pretty long video, but... Um, I, 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 before I start out, I want to say that all of these don't work with every random encounter, so I'll try to point out, uh, you know, which situations they work best with. And the first one I want to bring up is commerce. And this essentially works uh, if, they're, if you're encountering intelligent creatures, okay? If you're running a little bit of a slapstick campaign, you can, you know, have a wild bear that, you know, has a shop, but... Um, you know, for the most part, uh, it's it's going to work better if you're talking about you know, intelligent creatures that you would encounter. Uh, and so, uh, you know, yeah, maybe you encounter six goblins, and uh, um, they uh, are they have a wagon and they sell things out of it. You know, uh, it doesn't necessarily, and and you know, this doesn't necessarily have to be a positive encounter. Uh, this could be an opportunity for uh, this commercial uh, enterprise could could lie to the characters, could steal from them, could cheat them. Uh, it could be an ambush, but I discourage you from using that very much. Otherwise, your players are just going to start attacking random shopkeepers, and that's going to be a disaster. Uh, <clears throat> and, you, uh, you know, in terms of what the, uh, what commercial enterprise this random encounter should be selling, uh, you know, what they're selling, um, it should really depend on, um, uh, well, you, you want to make it interesting, but you don't want to make it uh, you know, too much uh, like Santa Claus. So, for example, if uh, it, it, there's a freak snowstorm and the characters don't have any um, uh, winter coats, you do not want uh, the goblins to be selling human-sized fur coats. That would just be a, a little, a little too unrealistic. But you don't want them to be selling onions either, because uh, you know, the, unless the characters are really into onions, uh, you know, they're going to be like, okay. This is a random non-encounter because we just keep going. We're not buying any onions and these don't look like dangerous people. So we're just going to forget about it. Uh, so, you know, in, in terms of the uh, freak snowstorm, you know, perhaps the goblins have some, you know, perhaps the goblins are selling something else, but they uh, have some fur blankets uh, it, that clever characters could ask for and be like, hey, do you guys any fur blankets in your in your uh you know wagon there that we could maybe come to an agreement on or maybe they know where the characters could find some and they can send them maybe for a price they can tell them uh where they could go uh to get winter clothing that sort of thing so in in my mind if especially if you want this to be a repeat encounter uh the best uh kind of commercial enterprises are those that are selling uh, uh, uh consumable goods food drink healing potions that sort of thing um it, so, you know, perhaps if the characters are on their way somewhere and they may be coming back, they may want to uh, stop and get um, um, some more of, of that particular item. Or if it's a traveling salesperson, um, you know, maybe they would encounter them elsewhere in this particular region. Maybe the, 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 um, there was a sale, a wagon, a wagon selling things that has a circuitous route. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know... Again, you, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, you don't necessarily want it to be like an apple orchard or something like that. If it's, you don't want it to necessarily be too mundane where, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to uh, uh, catch the character's interest. So you have to kind of know your characters a little bit, know what they're looking for, um, or, you know, come up with something fun. <clears throat> uh, 
And uh, uh, yeah, so I, I think that uh, a now, you know, obviously, again, it would be weird to in certain situations, if you're on some desolate mountain pass and your characters are half alive getting up there, it would be probably pretty weird to discover, um, you know, a little stall selling uh, hot cider, uh, you know, um, but uh, it isn't that out of the ordinary. A lot of random encounter tables uh, feature um, uh, monsters, so it wouldn't be that weird for uh, goblins selling cider to be um, well beyond the fringes of uh, civilization, um, you know, because they're probably not uh, uh, welcome in town. Uh, so their orchard is way out, in, way out in the boonies. Uh, so you know, and and you know, kind of like I said, if you if it doesn't really make sense to be there, having be a traveling wagon. Uh, uh, that sort of thing can really uh, uh, make uh, the the whatever encountered is more realistic. So uh, some sort of commercial enterprise. You can just take whatever it is, and have it be a commercial enterprise. And like I said, um, you know, you can, you can the goblins can still attack you later. <laughs> so uh, you know, just because uh, you, you, and I, I I really think I really think socializing a lot of these encounters uh, makes for a better better combat. Uh, you know, if you just meet a random uh, 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 creature and you start fighting it, that doesn't mean much. But if uh, if that creature stole your horse, that adds a layer of of, of uh, uh, story development to the conflict that is not present if there was no social interaction between you and uh, whoever you encounter. So anyway, enough about commerce. Uh, the next one is tricky, but it's fun, so I want to bring it up. It can easily uh, derail a campaign. It can it's, it makes a great one shot or uh, a side quest, but it, it is going to be a distraction, and that is uh, um, uh, baby creatures, baby animals. Uh, and um, you know, I think definitely if you're talking about baby intelligent creatures, uh, then you know, even if the characters are on a very important mission, it's going to be really hard for them to just leave a baby on the side of the road. Uh, so, uh, you know, unless they are incredibly evil, uh, that's, that's not really going to work. Um, and, you know, depending on, uh, it, you know, and it, where animals, uh, you know, people um, care a little bit less about them. Um, you know, if, if, uh, they, if they find a, um, baby, uh, a baby wild boar on the side of the road, they might eat it. Uh, so, um, you know, that's kind of the way it is. But, uh, but in regardless, uh, both of these uh, add a whole bunch of complexity and problems to the campaign in terms of are, are the characters going to try to find that creature's uh, family, uh, and, and uh, you know how 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 are they going to go about that? And, and it also uh, puts a bunch of limitations on characters. Uh, even if you're talking about uh, a, a a puppy or a foal, uh, you know, bringing along a dog on an adventure, bringing along a horse on an adventure, that might be very helpful. But, but the baby versions of these animals uh, are going to have a whole bunch of uh, uh, needs and, uh, and, and issues that have to be, you, you have to care for them a lot more. And you're not just going to be able to treat them um, like you would an adult, uh, an adult animal. And this goes, you know, even further in terms of baby monsters and those kinds of things. Uh, you do have to be wary if you find a baby monster, no matter how venomous it is, uh, one of the players will want to adopt it and keep it, and uh, and you should you you you're gonna have to th uh, think about this. You know, like I said, the longer the baby is with the characters, um, the more it, it's gonna, there's gonna be more and more hassles. Uh, they're they're gonna have to do a bunch of care and feeding and and raising training uh, uh, this particular creature that is gonna distract from the rest of the role playing games. But also, you have to think about what happens. Um, when uh, whatever it is uh, gets bigger. So, you know, yes, a baby tiger is super cute, but once it becomes a tiger, uh, it's a huge problem. Um, <laughs> and, and it takes a while for it to become a tiger, even if you say like, oh, it'll reach full maturity in a year or two. That's a long time. <laughs> in terms of like adventure, uh, you know, it's basically at baby tiger stage for, you know, six months or whatever. It's, it's, it's going to be a hassle. Uh, and, you know, that goes triple for if you're talking about baby intelligent creatures who, you know, once they get to be five or six years old, uh, they do not get, uh, you know, they get easier, uh, but uh, still not necessarily easier in, uh, in terms of uh, bringing them along on your adventures. <laughs> uh, 
So, uh, you know, not necessarily uh, <clears throat> uh, always a, a great idea. But yeah, if you've got a, a random uh, monster and animal table um, and uh, you want to make things interesting, uh, make it a baby. So that can be fun. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, enchantments, blessings, curses. Uh, so whatever it is that you encounter, be it animals or, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, or uh, orcs or whatever, um, just uh, have them already be under the effect of some kind of magic. Um, and this can be something that uh, improves them in some way, uh, or it can be some sort of delib debilitating, debilitating curse. Um, uh, so, but they, they've got some, something magical already. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, in terms of this, this can work great in terms of if there's an encounter that looks too strong for the characters, you can tone it down by having them already be affected by some sort of negative magic. Um, uh, and if there's a, and if there's a, if your player characters are just blowing through an adventure and, and blowing everything out of the water, uh, you can use, um, some sort of enchantment or blessing to, uh, make the opponents uh, more powerful than they ordinarily would be without having to add in a bunch of in more opponents, write new stats, so all those kinds of things. Uh, so it's, it's a really simple way to provide instant upgrade. Uh, so that, that's a pretty easy one. Uh, <clears throat> the next one, this is one I really like, and that is uh, whatever it is that you encountered, uh, they are uh, um, extremely ill, sick, um, or wounded. Uh, so, uh, you know, you come across a party of, uh, um, six goblins and, and maybe, um, only, uh, one D four of them are alive and they're all badly wounded. And this can really, uh, increase tension in a story. You can have this happen several times where they encounter groups that, uh, uh encounter, um, uh, groups of, of creatures or, or, uh, um, uh, that have been basically, um, wiped out by something can provide clues for, you know, what the big bad is in these kinds of situations. Uh, and it also, uh, it provides a, a, a very interesting uh, moral dilemma for the characters because, uh, you know, it may be a wounded monster, it may be a wounded enemy, and how do the characters react uh, when they're finding somebody who is no threat to them, um, who uh, really needs their help to live? Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a great... Um, moral dilemma to throw at the characters. So, um, you know, I, I, re I really like that one. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, this, that, this can also be a great way to introduce uh, non-player characters, NPCs, to the group. Uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, in, especially ones that you think that the players wouldn't necessarily trust right off the bat. Uh, and then the last uh, one that I want to cover is uh, uh, having two encounters that are fighting each other. So uh, you could have uh, two monsters that are fighting, or uh, you know, a group of goblins is fighting a monster, and uh, so the characters happen upon con conflict that is already happening between two other random encounters. Um, and this can be really interesting as well. Uh, you know, do the characters just stand there and watch? Uh, do they help one side or the other? Which, how do they determine <laughs> which side to help? Uh, so this, this can just present a bunch of, of really interesting wrinkles. Again, making that conflict much more interesting. If the characters just, just um, find that these creatures separately and have combat with them or not, um, you know, that's one thing. But, but the, having the, the, the conflict already being occurring really adds uh, details and elements of the story where there's, it's much more... Of, of a decision that reveals uh, things about the characters and kind of just makes the whole thing more interesting. So uh, this has been a few different ways to spruce up uh, random encounter tables. So commerce, baby animals, enchantments, blessings, and curses, uh, having the encounter be with something that's sick or wounded, and uh, having the encounter be taking place, two encounters are fighting each other. Uh, so, um, you know, those are kind of my five suggestions. What about you? Uh, how would you take a, uh, a, a random encounter table that, uh, you know, doesn't really, isn't really doing what you want or, or you're just bored with it? Um, how would you spruce it up? How would you make it, um, uh, interesting for, for the characters? So, uh, this has been the What If Brigade. Have a great day.